But do you think the Senate has a basis for insisting that he comes himself? I mean, seeing that the Inspector General's pleas was deployed to Benue, yes. and the President said he, he was shocked that he didn't show up there. Yes. Should the Senate insist that he honors this invitation? Yes, certainly. Because you see, certain explanation uh, might not be able to come, or you, you probably will not be able to extract some explanation from any representative. Because we hear that from time to time to say, oh, my um, function is to simply say it as it is. I cannot go beyond this scope. I'm not duty bound to say everything. But as a chief enforcement officer of the Federation, he's duty bound to be there and okay. explain. Mr. Quakers, we're looking at chief enforcement officer. Yes. But the chief enforcement officer answers to someone. Yes. I mean, going by the laws of the land. Yes. The, there's a ministry that oversees the police. Should it be the IGP that is invited to investigate the killings or the Minister of Interior? Seeing that we, under that Ministry of Interior, there is a police, there is an NSCDC, there is a DSS. I mean, all these people are supposed to ensure internal security. Yes. So should it be the IGP they are looking for or the Minister of Interior? Now, now but you could look at it from two perspectives. Let's take it from the angle of what the president said when he went to, I think it was Benue. He said he's surprised and shocked that the, the Inspector General of Police was not on ground, that he expected him to be on ground. In such instance, who should you hold responsible? It's no longer the Inspector General of Police, but the Minister for Interior. And like I keep saying, our challenge is our inability to abide by rules and regulations, or understand the dynamics of democracy. In, in, in a sinner environment, what you probably have is a recall of the Minister for Interior or Internal Affairs to ask questions as regards why there is a breakdown, for instance, of law and order. The IGP ordinarily should report to the Minister for Interior. But the question is, does he report to the Minister for Interior? If the President could say that I asked the IGP to be on ground and he's not here. So you have a divided house. You have a, a divide and rule order that is in place, which has to be addressed. And I think that's what the, the National Assembly will have also seen. In a normal setting, the National Assembly should invite the Minister for Interior, who will come with the Inspector General of Police, or perhaps all the, the heads of the various uh, internal apparatus to, to come and explain why there's a breakdown of law and order. And that's where, the essence. That's where, the essence of leaving the Constitution. Where do you think the interest lies the most? Because the letter the, from the Senate uh, did say ill treatment of Senator Dino Milae and the killings, the wanton killings that are happening across the country. What do you think uh, should have been such that we don't have ourselves in this kind of mess? If the Senate had written the killings happening in the country, do you think that the Inspector General of Police would have seen a compulsory um, uh, means to want to attend to, what, what, to the Senate. No, I agree with you. If it had been limited to, for instance, the aspect of the killings. Now, why long, and that's why I said we also must avoid playing politics. Uh, Dino Milai's issue was already in court. And the Inspector General of Police, being the Chief Enforcement Officer of the Federation, is a party to the proceedings. So that issue is already sub -judice. So why will you invite him to uh, inquire from him the, in court, the ill treatment of Dino Milai when the matter is already in court? And in any event, Dino Milai also can take this up by way of enforcement of his fundamental rights where the rights have also been infracted. Now, you can't lump uh, a general issue with specific issue. So again, for me, I thought that the Inspector General of Police would have gone there to explain that, look, okay, I can answer this, this I cannot answer because it's sub -judice. But to stay away from attending is an act of disrespect or disregard for the National Assembly, even if it is being politicized. But these are things that I think we need to avoid. Let's yes. go by the Constitution. Looking at the Constitution now, yes. do you think, especially with this kind of situation, yes. are there gaps there that need to be looked at? And, and covered up? Well, no doubt. It's a working document. But for now, the way it is, I mean, it's clear enough, black and white. We create the problems. There are, there are actually problems that can be addressed by extension. What do I mean by this? Uh, as you forge along, you see certain gaps, and then you fill the gaps. But you don't create the problem when the law on this is very clear. In and that's, to, that's my own position. In addition to what you just said, if the IGP has erred, then who checks it? 
if, it, if it's not reporting to Mr. President, as Mr. President expected, and uh, uh, his ministry, which is the Ministry of Interior, is neither here nor there too. So who will arrest, for instance, the no, no, General of Police? I'll give you an example. You have the Police Service Commission. Now, you see, the Constitution, it might not be perfect, right? It might not be a perfect document, but there are certain provisions that... Um, tends to guard against abuse or arbitrariness. You have checks and balances. You also have the uh, Police Service Commission, uh, and then you have uh, the Police, uh, Council. Police Council, which is a supervisory uh, council that is responsible to ensure that there is smooth and effective and efficient administration of policing, so to speak, in Nigeria. Now, because of all of these abuses, that's why some people are not clamoring for the need to have state police. Because you have a situation where the entire the power is concentrated at the center. But, but, so the question is, who does it report to? But, but wait, Mr. Quakers, the police council, which yes. is supposed to ensure effective administration, yes. is supposed to meet like once in three months. Yes. I understand. Yes. But they are not meeting. No, and it involves the state governors, the president, the... I think the Chief Justice of Nigeria, yeah. and basically various... Exactly. the composition, parties. exactly. Okay, so if they are not meeting, how then is that means the Minister of Interior, the Inspector General, please, and indeed the Controller Generals of Customs and Immigration, they are all on their own. And that's why I said the essence of all of this is for us to now. You see, I, I, let me quote uh, the late uh, Fidel Ismadelo SAN. He said, "Our greatest challenge in this country is not in the want of rules and regulations or laws. It is our attitudinal disposition to the observance of these rules and regulations." Now you've just read the constitutional provision. There is a provision for the police council. So you have an agency of government or a creation of government that is to supervise the Nigerian police force. Now, the aspect of meeting cannot come uh, without someone calling for it. So clearly which, what this goes to show to me is that there is a general laissez-faire or lackadaisical attitude to enforcing the provisions of the law. And that's why this has lingered. Question who does he report to? He ought to have been called to order. For instance, you have the National uh, Council of State meeting. They sit from time to time to discuss. Now, these are issues that also ought to be addressed. And now, if uh, the killing has been going on for quite a while and nobody has deemed it fit, like Obama said, the greatest challenge in Africa is our inability to strengthen institutions. But I think the Senate has deemed it fit, uh, contrary to what you said, because the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, came out to ask governors to be part of this fight against stopping the killings across the country. Do you think that uh, the Senate President is going the right way, talking to the governors, asking them to do this? Or are there fundamental uh, misgivings or misplacements that we should be looking at? I, I, would rather, I would rather limit myself to the second part of your um, summary, that there are fundamental defects that we need to be looking at. Quite, quite frankly, if it's a question of law, the law is up, the law is clear, and we have it black and white. Now, I, I want to believe that the Senate President was so concerned, that's why he made the statement that he made, that look, it appears that there is a general breakdown of law and order. And no one is calling enforcement agencies to order. If you go around, look at things happening. The other day I just read in the papers how um, some men in police uniform robbed some people around Festac and World of it, and that has been going on for quite a while. And nobody seems to be investigating it. Nobody has gone there to ask what is going on here. And they're actually policemen in uniform. Now, before now, I remember that there's um, an IGP monitoring unit that goes about from place to place effecting arrests. Question is, are they still on ground? Are they still very effective? So if any concerned Nigerian sees all of this, it is your duty to also speak. And, and I think that's what the Senate President has done. He's gone beyond his remit. A sense of his being there is to ensure that you have laws that are enacted for the peace, order, and good government. Now, if you have laws in place for peace, for order, and good government, and you still have a situation of chaos, and you still have challenges, it means the laws are not working. Somebody once said that our laws are obeyed in breach than in practice. And it's a challenge. The laws are not working. That means it's the people now, not the laws. No, no, the laws are there. The laws are not working. The reason why the laws are not working, what will make any law to work? is the attitude. 
If you choose to obey the law, the law will stand. But if you choose to disregard the law and the law cannot come after you, then something is fundamentally wrong. Okay, we'll take a very quick short break and when we come back, we'll continue along this uh, line of discussion. Stay with us.